Hi friends, welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and this is my Oliver. And for those of you returning, you know we love you. So with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one. So for this DIY, I was gonna use my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, but I end up painting it with white. Then I am going to use this cow, this metal cow from Dollar Tree. And then two of these um, signs that you get from Dollar Tree, these had the stars on the top, but I just cut the top portion off of these. And I think they measured 18 inches long. And then this decal I created with my Cricut. So I'm gonna start off by removing the hanger from that cowl, and then I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. Now the reason why I did white instead of black, because as I was painting it black, I realized my words in black, so I had to change it up. So I just took, I'm sorry I forgot to hit record, I took my wood um, glue and my hot glue there, and I put a little bit on each one of those um, jumbo craft sticks to connect the two signs together. You've seen me do it a million times. Um, I'm sure you probably know how to do it. And once those two signs were together, I'm not gonna paint it. I really like the look of those boards, so I'm gonna leave it like it is. And I added my decal, my heat transfer vinyl, and the protective sheet, and I am, um, <laughs> I just did my heat press there and then I'm going to remove the carrier and there it is. I love the way it looks. Then I'm going to do the same thing on metal. Now I wasn't sure if you could do this on metal but I looked it up and you can. So I did have to go at 400 degrees for 30 seconds and I'm just pressing really hard. Now you can see I added a couple of towels underneath it because it was metal. I didn't want um the heat to go through. I wanted to give it some protection on my table and it worked perfectly. So once it was done, I went around with my ink color and I did go and do just a little distressing all the way around. I wanted it to have a little more contrast against that uh, the boards there since they are white. I didn't want it to blend in as much, so that's why I'm doing this. Plus, I like the distressing as well. So I just go over all the edges of my little cowl here, and I think I went ahead and do a little bit in the middle, yeah. I'm just gonna add a little bit here and there in the middle. And then after that, I'm just gonna take my Mod Podge and cover the whole thing with Mod Podge. That way it just kinda helps protect the uh, paint as well as that heat transfer vinyl. And then I took some fix all glue here because we all know hot glue and metal don't really like each other. So I'm using the fix all and then I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue around the edges um, just for that immediate hold. And I did hold it um, down onto my picture here for a few minutes just to give it some time to cure. After that, I took some of this ribbon. I got this from Hobby Lobby, this um, summer they had it clearance it was like 99 cents for a big spool so i'm just going to uh, hot glue it in the back i'm just wrapping it around the bottom of my sign and i'm going to wrap it around the top of my sign as well and i just hot glued the ends to the back just like you see there and then after i had the bottom done i decided i wanted to take some jute rope and i'm just going to hot glue it to the back and i'm going to wrap it around the bottom of my sign um, three times and I wrap it to where it kind of overlaps and goes to the other side of the twine as I come around. Hopefully that makes sense. And then after that, I am just going to hot glue that end to the bottom and I did the same exact thing to the top. And then I took some smaller twine. I made two little bows only because I forgot to cover the holes with some spackle before I painted it. So I thought I'll just put a few bows on my cow here. But you could always, if you recreate this, add some spackling to cover those holes. Then I just made a bow doing the awareness ribbon, scrunching it up in the middle and tying some jute twine in the middle of it. And then I'm making a finger bow here and with uh, my twine. And then um, I added those two together with the twine that was already on the plaid bow. Then I added some boxwood greenery and that bow to the 
top left hand corner and then added some more rope as a hanger and that's all there was i was going to cover the back with shipping paper but i have to get more because i'm all out <laughs> so here it is i really love the way this turned out you have to let me know what you think about this one as well Okay, so I am using heat transfer vinyl that came from Mary Made. Now, they have sent me this beautiful matte um, vinyl that I just love, and then some reflective vinyl that I'm going to show you here in a moment. Now, in November 1st, I did the reason for this season, and I used their glitter vinyl. And so then they were supposed to send me this mat and they didn't at that time, so they sent me some more. So I'm giving it a try. So I'll have a link to them if, in the description box if you'd like to check out their products. But I just wanna thank Mary Maid. I really did enjoy your products and I enjoyed using them. So let's get on to DIY in number two. So for this DIY, I am going to use some of this um, reflective heat transfer vinyl it's a black color I've got four of these no five of these squares from Dollar Tree these wood squares I am going to use one of these um, I don't know if they call it a tomato cage or if they call it a wreath but I got that from Dollar Tree and then I used I think like eight of these bushes of boxwood greenery that I get from Amazon or uh, Walmart that I absolutely love and my Waverly chalk paint in the color elephant and in the color white. So I'm gonna start out by picking my decal. I got this off Cricut MySpace and since I'm using heat transfer vinyl, I am going to have to mirror the image. So basically you hit the mirror button and it makes it backwards. And then you lay your vinyl upside down to where the shiny part is on your mat. And then you make sure your Cricut is set to vinyl I'm sorry, uh, iron on or heat transfer vinyl, and then you hit go and it prints it out. Now I love weeding the heat transfer vinyl more than regular vinyl because the regular vinyl sticks to your fingers and you just, I don't know, but there's just something about the way this weeds, I just love using it. <laughs> so I'm just weeding all the little parts here that need to come off and it's really easy to see where the lines were. And then once I was done, I took my Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I painted each one of those squares with that color front and back. After that, I did go with my elephant here and a little brush and I'm just kind of doing some dry brushing around the edges. And um, I will distress some in the middle too, just to give it that farmhouse look that I like. If you don't like distressing and you wanna make this, you can totally skip that part. So then after that, I took my image here I put my protective sheet down and I am just going to set, I think it was set at 270 for 30 seconds. And um, I think, I can't remember if I had to add it a little bit longer. I think I did. I did have to add it um, for a few more minutes or seconds because it was trying to pull up a little bit. Once I was done, I went with my wood glue here and I'm just putting some wood glue on the bottom edge of this wood piece and then I'm adding the hot glue on the parts that I did not have. I'm adding the hot glue to where I did not have the wood glue. Oh, and then I added the the front part to it and that's the bottom and the front. And then I'm gonna, I did that all the way around. So here's the last piece. I'm adding wood glue all the way around in different sections. And then I'm gonna add the hot glue in the sections to, that did not have the wood glue. That way we have the permanent hold and then the immediate hold as well. And then I just hold it um, tight for a few seconds to let the, the hot glue bond. Once I was done with that, I took some of this styrofoam you get from Dollar Tree and I, it was just a little too big to fit in so I cut some of the edge off. I took three pieces actually and I'm just hot gluing them together inside. This is just to give it some height for my um, cage. And then I'm just gonna stick that in there and it fit really tightly so I didn't have to glue it or anything. Then I went through with some of the boxwood. I cut the picks apart and I just start going in and poking them along the bottom of my cage here. I'm gonna call it a tomato cage. I don't know if that's what it is, but that's what I'm gonna call it. And I'm poking it into the styrofoam. I go all the way around the bottom and then after that I started working in sections. So I'm gonna take three, I think I just used three of the, um, 
picks here and I'm going to use those zip ties to tie them around the tomato cage. Now, you could probably, this might have been easier and I thought about this after I was all done. I should have probably put um, some of the floral foam inside, stick it in there and then just, you know, stick the picks into the floral foam. That might have been easier. Um, so if you want to recreate something like this, you, you can always try doing it that way. This works out fine too. Um, it just, I just had to um, just kind of work at doing those zip ties. I did kind of start doing just getting the zip tie going around the bar that I was going to use and then putting the picks in there and then tightening and that, that seemed to work a little easier. But I just went all the way around the tomato cage and worked my way up doing that, making sure that any of those zip ties were covered. And then I took some of these plaid beads that I get from, or half beads I got from Amazon and I just decided to hot glue some along the edge and that's all there was for this. And I really love this little topiary. I think it came out so cute and it's farmhouse and I love it. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one as well. And by the way, I got the inspiration from um, uh, Kirkland's. I saw something like this on Kirkland's website. Okay, if you'd like to follow me on social media, I would just invite you to come on over. I have links in my description box below, and you can come check out my social media accounts. Okay, it is time for a celebration of your recreation, and Valerie, you did such an awesome job on all of those little gnomes. Thank you so much for sharing that with me, and if you have a creation or recreation that you would like to showcase, for me to showcase for you, you can send pictures to my email address that's listed there, or you can send them to me through Facebook Messenger or Instagram, and I'd be more than happy to showcase them here for you. Okay, here's DIY number three. So for this DIY, I am going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the color white and in the color elephant. I am going to use these wood cutout animals that I got from 24 Hour Crafts. I'm gonna use pieces of a five gallon paint stir sticks I had cut down and then three five gallon paint stir sticks as well as this decal that I created with my Cricut. So, and using the same heat transfer vinyl. So I'm gonna start off by painting all of those with my white and I guess I have this backwards in order. I decided to connect these first because <laughs> it would have been easier. So I laid out the five gallon wood pieces. I added the small pieces on top to connect them. Here I'm just drawing lines so I know where to put my glue. And then I'm just gonna use wood glue and hot glue. I'm gonna put it all along inside those areas that I um, marked. And then that way I can connect those three pieces together. Now this will be the front, not the back. Normally I do this to the back, but I wanted those to be on the front of this sign. So you'll see here, I'm just gonna add the hot glue and then I'm gonna use my little pieces there to connect them. And I do that to the top and the bottom and then I painted it all white. Ah, oh, yeah, my editing, you guys. I've already seen two problems here. <laughs> Anyways, uh, okay. Then once it was done, I took my elephant and I am just gonna do some heavy dry brushing, distressing all over the front. I did the back as well because as I was doing this, I realized, oh my goodness, I'm doing the back, not the front. So I did both sides. But again, if you don't like distressing and you wanna make something like this, you don't have to do this part. And then once I get done with all the distressing, I'm going to distress those animals and then I'm going to add my sayings and then I'm going to put it all together. If you're new here again, I want to welcome you and say thank you so much for stopping by today. And if you like home decor on a budget, holiday decor, thrift flips, gift ideas, and if you like farmhouse, rustic, you name it, then I would invite you to hit that red subscribe button and become part of our YouTube family. And then hit that notification bell and set it to all so you are notified whenever I upload a video. My normal upload times are Mondays at 
5 p.m. Central, but I do like to participate in different challenges and playlists during the week. So if you hit that notification bell, you'll be notified whenever that is. And I am really going to try this year, you guys, to have two videos every week. So if there's not a playlist I'm participating in, I will just have one probably on Thursday nights. So be aware for that. And then again, you guys, if you like today's video, please make sure you hit that thumbs up and comment so that way YouTube knows you like my content and will send it out for others to see. Okay, so as you see, I put eggs on the chicken, bacon on the pig, and milk on the cow. And then I added some boxwood greenery on the top. I made a little finger bow with that um, ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm just hot gluing it to the top. Then I'm gonna use some more of that ribbon to make a hanger in the back and that's all there was. It was really easy. Um, I love using that heat transfer vinyl like I said I kind of enjoy using that more than the regular vinyl because I don't I feel like I have a harder time weeding with the regular vinyl than I do the heat transfer vinyl and you can see that you can use that heat transfer vinyl on wood it doesn't have to be just on fabric and you can use it on metal too right <laughs> we learned we both learned something new through this okay so Maybe you didn't learn something new. Maybe you already knew that. I learned something new. <laughs> okay, here's DIY number four. Okay, so I'm gonna use these baskets from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use two of them. I'm gonna use three, well, let me go through the paint. I'm gonna use Waverly chalk paint, the color white and ink. Then I'm gonna use three of these candlesticks here from Dollar Tree. And then these round wood pieces, I'm not sure where I got them. I have found them in my stash. I might have been Walmart, but I'm not positive. So I'm going to just start off by washing each one of those candlesticks with some um, alcohol. And then after that, I took my E6000 and I'm going to put E6000 along half of the top part of one of those candlesticks. And then after that, I'm going to have to use a new container here because that one was running out. So once I have all my E6000 on top, I'm going to add some hot glue again so that we have permanent hold and immediate hold. Now, if you are going to do this, um, be very careful because it kept wanting to come off while I was painting and doing all that kind of stuff. I probably should have let it sit longer. Um, so it might be a better idea to paint it first and then glue it. So then while those were, I painted those white and then while they were drying, I went with my basket and a chip brush from uh, Dollar Tree and I'm just doing a heavy dry, well not really heavy, but I'm doing a dry brushing all the way around the basket because I wanted you, I wanted to cover up some of the black. I wanted it to be mainly white, but I wanted you to be able to see bits of the black so that it gives it that distressed look. And then I went ahead and did a light coat of white over the two of those wood rounds that I have. And then I went with my black and I went over my candlesticks and did some distressing. And then I'm gonna do, I did distressing on the wood pieces as well. Now again, if you don't like distressing, you don't have to do this. It's just something that I really like. I feel like it is really farmhouse and rustic and I really like that. So then after that, I'm gonna take my E6000 and my hot glue again. And I am going to add the wood pieces to the top of my candle. And as you can see, I'm sorry, I don't think I showed this. The two candlesticks I put together, one was upside down. Um, so once I had the wood pieces on, I'm gonna add, I just added hot glue on this part and then I'm just gonna hold this down. I used my little um, finger protector to just kind of smush the, the basket pieces into that hot glue. After that, I decided because it was still kind of wobbly, this one was, um, I knew it would set up and it would stick fine, but I wanted to wrap some twine around it. Now I'm kind of wishing I would have just waited and wrapped it a little bit higher because I think it would have looked better on this, the taller one. But I just wrapped some of that jute cord around it in the middle of it and then added a bow. And then I did the same on the other one, but I actually brought it up a little bit more and I think I like it better looking that way. So I might try to change that. Then after that, I took some more of these round styrofoam pieces from Dollar Tree and I just filled them with my boxwood and then I added some candles on the top and I really love how these came out. Ugh, I can't wait to put these in my living room. I still have my Christmas decor up and I have to take it all down. So <laughs> anyways, so if you would like to see how I made that riser, you can check out my video that I made uh, last week 
And then here is the final reveal of all four items. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, if you did, make sure you hit that thumbs up before you go and make sure if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button before you go as well. And with all that being said, you guys, I will be back again on Thursday with a Valentine's Day video. So with all that, have a blessed week and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.